So we've made some changes to the studio around here, but it's still just a little bit boring. Maybe let's try bringing in a plant. Now it doesn't quite do it. Um, ah, let's bring back the poop emoji. That doesn't really work very well either. Um, let's see. Ah, I got it. internet it's less done again with my home kit home so led light strips can be dispatched to just about any part of your home kit home but a popular use of them is for biased lighting behind televisions and computer monitors or imax like that one back there but i couldn't for the life of me find any tutorials online for how to add an led light strip specifically to an iMac. So here we are. Now adding a light strip to an iMac presents a unique challenge because there aren't really any flat planes to attach the LED strip to, so we need to make corners. There are a number of different ways to do this. I did this in the past by just kind of sticking it on there and hoping that the bins would work and it was just a total mess. You can also make a 90 degree angle by folding the light strip, but you run the risk of damaging a diode or a solder joint connection. Um, you can also cut the light strip and use a 90 degree connector. This is a very clean approach, but as I mentioned in the past, my eyeballs don't work all that well and this is just kind of a non-starter for me. So I'll be taking a page out of Craig Polson's book and using the loop method. Now Craig's video is way more detailed when it comes to measuring your light strips, how to measure for the loops themselves, how to measure your monitor, your TV, all of those things. So I definitely recommend you check out his video if you're headed in that direction. But here I'm focusing on my 2017 21 and a half inch iMac. But this should apply to any of the iMacs that are in that 21 and a half inch range that have been produced in the last decade or so. You can use just about any HomeKit compatible light strip for this, and I left some of my favorites in the description box just below that like button. But Anva sent us their crazy cool K1 Chameleon light strip for this project, and we'll talk a bit more about it a little later. And I've also got some really cool automation ideas for you, so you'll definitely want to stick around till the end. Now, this video may get a little long, so I've left timestamps down below if you want to jump around. Well, I say that's enough jibber jabber. Let's pull this thing down and get to work. So here is the before shot and as you can tell it's a hot mess. I didn't really do anything to try to make it look good. I didn't even really put any thought into putting the light strip on the back of the iMac. I just kind of did it because I was, you know, sort of impatient. This is an Onvis K1 light strip. It's another one that I bought before and, you know, it, I just wanted to get it on there and, and see what we could do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it. I think that'll be the best thing to do here. So, you know, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is that you want to make sure that you clean the surface, whatever surface it is. If it's an iMac, if it's television, if it's cabinets, whatever it is, you want to make sure that you clean it and that you clean it with the proper solution. Here I'm using just straight isopropyl alcohol. Um, that is what I would recommend. You can clean it with whatever, but the isopropyl alcohol is going to help get rid of any of the small dust particles and, and really help to clean the surface and have the light strip adhesive better adhere to the surface. So as we get our surface prepared here, I do want to talk a little bit about placement of the light strip on the iMac. So in my opinion, you want it as close to the edge as possible without the light strip actually being seen. So one of the issues that I ran into with my original method here, which I don't recommend, and also with the loop method is that as you get closer to the edge, the loops at the corners might be exposed a little bit. And so you want to keep that in mind. Also, you want to remember that you might be reaching around to the back of your iMac to access the ports or to turn it on, and your hand may hit your light strip on the back, 
you know, and peeling off the light strip. So you don't want to have that issue. Um, so you want to have it set just enough so that you're making sure that your light strip isn't exposed from the edges and that your hand isn't going to hit it. It's sort of a delicate balance there. Um, but if you put it just below the ports, you should be pretty good. Regardless of which light strip you're using, you will have the end of the light strip, which may or may not be extendable, and you'll also have the end that leads to the power supply. This is particularly important because you may want to run the cable that leads to the power supply through the hole in the back of the mount for the iMac. So definitely keep that in mind, and also you want to sort of plan out, you know, how you're going to manage your cables afterwards. Now onto the loop itself. It is pretty straightforward, but there are a few things you want to keep in mind. So if if you're holding your LED strip in your two hands, your top hand will twist away from you, but at the same time as it's coming back around to you, you want to make sure that you twist the LED strip itself so that the LEDs are facing you. With the LEDs on the loop, they should be on the outside of the loop, and that will allow for the 3M adhesive to be stuck to the surface. Right? So you can use anything to help hold down your loops. I'm using these photography clamps, but you can really use anything that is light and won't damage your diodes. So we'll go ahead and make our second loop here. I did struggle with this one a little bit, as you can see here, but it's essentially the same idea. You twist and then you want to make sure that you're twisting that LED strip at the same time as you sort of swoop your wrist around. And making sure again that your LEDs are on the outside of the loop will come down. We'll go ahead and add our other clamp there and we'll make our third loop here. Where I really struggled, you know, making sure that I got the, you know, the, the twisting right because it is sort of inverted and flipped. So that was a little bit difficult for my brain to, uh, to manage there. But, uh, you know, ultimately we did get it done. Now you'll notice that I didn't bother measuring and you might want to consider doing that. So I'm using this light strip on the back of a 21 and a half inch iMac. And so, you know, a two meter light strip like the Onvis K1 chameleon light strip worked out quite well. Did have some excess that wasn't really an issue. I just created another loop and ran the excess light strip, you know, kind of parallel to the left side there. But, you know, that's something you definitely want to keep in mind if you're using this technique for a television or a different size iMac. Even the different iMac models, because they have different screen sizes, the chassis may be a little bit different size there as well. So you want to keep that in mind. One thing that Craig did, which I did here, which, you know, I didn't really see any particular benefits, is that Craig connected his light strip and he left it on for, I think it was you know, a couple of hours, so that the light strip itself would heat up and then would be able to better mold to the loops. Um, I didn't find that necessary for me. I also didn't measure it wasn't that big of a project but again if you are you know using this technique for a television or a larger monitor you may want to consider doing that for a longer period of time Okay, so we removed our old light strip, we prepared the surface of our iMac, we looked at how to form the loops, now let's go ahead and install our new light strip. So as you can see here, what I'm doing is kind of measuring a little bit, um, you know, kind of seeing where I wanna put the light strip in terms of its distance from the edge. You wanna make sure that your light strip is set in far enough so that the loops and the corners aren't extending past the edge of your iMac. Not only does it look bad, but you'll see here in a minute that on some of the corners you can have issues when you're reaching around to access the ports or to turn the machine on or off. And really the next step is just to peel off the protective film on the back of the light strip and stick it to the iMac. One thing I can definitely recommend is that you're applying firm but gentle pressure to the light strip as you attach it to the surface, making sure that the light strip is well adhered to the surface. Um, you'll do this on each of the sides and the top and bottom. And you know, I typically go for a five count just to make sure that the light strip is well adhered to the surface. 
The last thing I wanted to touch on is your power supply and your physical controls and maybe any cabling that you have. So while most light strips will come with 3M tape on the back of the power supply and on the control box, some don't. So you'll want to keep that in mind. Also, when it comes to cabling, depending on the model that you have, the cabling might be a little bit stiff. And if you don't have proper support for this, it can start to peel the light strip off the back of your iMac. I ran into this problem, but it was easily solved by just adding a bit of extra double-sided tape. Here we have a before and after shot, and I have to say it's not too terrible. It's definitely not perfect. You know, the lines aren't straight by any stretch of the imagination. The loops are different sizes. Um, the bottom loop on the left-hand corner there does kind of stick out a little bit, which I did end up adjusting later. The cabling is a bit of a mess. I did have to add a couple of pieces of double-sided tape there. But all in all, especially considering this isn't something you're going to see all the time, and for a blind dude, I don't think it's half bad. Now for today's project, we've been using the Onvis K1 Chameleon light strip, which is a very unique light strip in the HomeKit space. So let's look at it in a bit more detail. All right, let's break this thing down. The Onvis K1 Chameleon light strip isn't your run-of-the-mill light strip having 20 individually addressable LED zones on a two meter strip, allowing you to paint with color using the Onvis Home app. It also has music, twinkle, security, and preset effect modes as well. It also has a fairly unique multi-button physical controller with a built-in microphone, which we'll look at in more detail momentarily. It's also claiming 1800 lumens and comes in two and five meter lengths. The Onvis K1 connects to your smart home using a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi band and actually has an IP65 rating for the strip itself, but not for any of the electrical components. So this may be a good option for you outdoors as long as your temperatures don't drop below negative 10 or go above 45 degrees Celsius, which I hope they don't. From a top-down level, we essentially have six different effect modes. Main, paint, music, twinkle, security, and several different presets. However, I have to admit that I really did struggle with this light strip's functionality in the Onvis Home app. There are a ton of different settings and tweaks for all of the different modes and the verbiage that's used really isn't all that clear for me. This even after I thoroughly studied Simon's video on how to use the K1 light strip in the Onvis Home app and I definitely recommend you check out that video after you finish this one. But ultimately, I just walked away from the Onvis Home app. And then I remembered that the K1 has a pretty fantastic physical controller, which actually works out better for me as a legally blind user because the Onvis Home app is completely inaccessible using voiceover. Looking closer at the physical controller, we do have a built-in microphone for music mode, and we also have three buttons, a larger power button and two up and down buttons, which actually have different functions depending on how many times they're pressed. A single press of the power button will turn the light strip on and off as it should, but a double press of the same button will cycle through the six different effect modes that we talked about earlier. A triple press of the power button will actually toggle between brightness and color adjustments when you're in main mode. And you can make these adjustments using the plus and minus buttons. When in paint mode, these two buttons go through your play gallery and all of your created paintings from first to last. When in music mode, this allows you to select which mode and how the light strip will react to whatever the microphone picks up. In twinkle mode, this allows you to select which twinkle style you actually want. And in preset mode, well, this just goes through the different presets that it has. In HomeKit, the Onvis K1 doesn't really function any differently than any other light strip, so I won't bore you with that here, but we can take all of those different lighting effects that we talked about earlier and port them over to HomeKit, and here's how you do that. 
starting out in the Onvis Home app from the Automations tab, which is our second option along the bottom. We'll tap the plus button at the top right from the Scenes option. Now we want to give our scene a clever name. I'm choosing You'll See because, well, you'll see. Then we want to tap Add Accessories and select the Onvis K1 light strip. Then once we've done that, we'll tap the check button at the top right. Then we'll select power state and choose whether or not you actually want your light strip to turn on or off. Here I do want to select on. And then we'll select our mode. Now of course we can choose just a solid color which is fine and dandy. But if you want to actually port over to HomeKit any of these lighting effects, you'll want to choose the modes tab there and here's where you have all of your different lighting effects options you can choose these to your heart's content once you are content we'll tap the plus button at the top right and we'll do that a second time to confirm Hopping over to Apple's home app, we want to track down the scene that we just created and the best way that I found to do this is to go into the room where you actually have the light strip and swipe through the scenes until you find it. I gave mine a clever name, you'll see, so that I'm able to find it easier throughout all of the different scenes that I have in that particular room. Of course, you can go in and long press on the scene to edit it and change the name if you'd like, but one thing I definitely recommend you don't do is you don't touch, you don't edit the actual light strip itself. This will actually cancel out any of the settings that you had from the Onvis Home app and you'll have to start this process all over again. But you can tap add and remove accessories to, well, add and remove accessories. And once you're happy with your newly created scene, you can tap done and then tap X to get out of the scene screen. <laughs> A cool way that I automate the K1 light strip along with some Philips Hue lights and the Santella desk lamp here in the studio is by using the Onva CT2 contact sensor on the studio door so whenever it opens all of the lights automatically turn on but this only happens at night or if the shades are drawn. Speaking of the shades, I have another really cool automation that uses a smart button to control them. So during the day, if I draw the shades, all the lights, including the Onvis K1 light strip, will turn on to 100% brightness to a very cool white. But if I open the shades, all of the lights, including the Onvis K1 light strip, will just turn off. And so that's what happens during the day, but if it's nighttime, Nothing happens because the lights need to be on because, well, it's nighttime. So this was a really fun project. I learned a lot and the Onvis K1 Chameleon light strip is a bitchin' product even if the app experience is a bit of a mess. But what questions do you have about it? What questions do you have about installing light strips on your iMac? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also below the video in the description box you'll find links to all of the different products that we mentioned in today's video as well as a link to our blog over at myhomekithome.com if you prefer a written version and you'll also find and links to our social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at My Home Kit Home. If you're interested in more HomeKit automation ideas, you can check out this playlist here, or you can check out this video here. As always, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on more great HomeKit automation content in the future. Well, that's about all that I have for you today. I do thank you for watching, and until I see you in the next one, this has been Dustin with My Home Kit Home.